take the time to go to the first Francis Ngannou interview with Joe Rogan, and you'll get to see where this man came from. Bro. Insane. M made me tear up, dude. There were some moments where I was just like, dude, nobody can say shit to this man. You don't know what the f Yeah, give us a little bit of that uh, interview. How did it sound? <laughs> I had to go dig a hole in the in the desert. <laughs> I don't know for the reason. I don't know. It don't matter for the reason. Okay, so Dana wants to tell me to <laughs> fight here. I don't care for the reason. <laughs> That's really good. Dude. Yo. The casuals, we don't know nothing at all. What's up? Welcome back to The Casuals, a combat sports and MMA show hosted by casual fans that don't know nothing at all, but sometimes know something. I think we just get it right sometimes. That's we, true. If, if you are watching this show and you're basing your bets on yeah. what we say, mm. you are going to lose everything. Yeah. Everything. Your house, your children, your <laughs> life, everything, your friends, Marriage. your sex drive. <laughs> I have gotten so many things wrong on this past card. It was pretty amazing, actually. Think, I'm actually the new Brendan Schaub, dude. Two weeks, two weeks <laughs> in a row, we get it all wrong. <laughs> all right, Hop right off the bat, that was David So, everybody. Yeah. That is our resident fighter, Nick the Ear, and this is me, Gilbert. We got Pete behind the mic and like 40 other people in this yeah. room. Yeah, David. Uh, let's talk about this fight. Uh, we got everything wrong. Yeah, a hundred percent. You know what? I, the fight that I want to talk about the most that I only chose this person because I absolutely love her. She is the karate hottie. Yeah. And I always root for people who have smaller eyes. So <laughs> karate hottie, I had a feeling she was going to lose. First of all, the person that she was going up against is a giant. Yeah. Yeah. First of all, the size difference, yeah. the strength difference, and we people forget too. We they only talk about grappling in the sense of taking somebody down. What about the fucking Muay Thai clinch game? Dude. Yeah. People don't do it enough in the UFC. Fucking wow, dude. She was just grabbing the back of her head and making her eat those knees for breakfast. Bow, 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 up the middle. That fight was really hard to watch. It yeah, was. I, it was tough. It was, it was I, hard. I think we all love Karate Hottie, right? Who doesn't? And then, yeah. uh, first of all, hold on. Take a step back. What You only root for people with small eyes? Yes. Slanty eyes. Shafkat Rachmanov can't even see his pupils. <laughs> small. 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 Oh, champion. Big. He has single eyelid for sure, that guy. That fool's face is so confusing, dude. His like body stature says Russian, but his face says Asian. Yeah, uh, I like that. I like that. All right, I like the Kazakhs, dude. All right, back to the uh, Fuzev, uh, Fuzev uh, Gamrot fight card. So yeah, Michelle Waterson. Oh man, does she retire after this? I don't think so. It, and it's very. She seemed game, dude. Afterwards, she was like, oh, she's her, her and Rashad, right? Well, oh, yeah, I heard. So there, I, I was reading an interview about her saying that she felt like she can come back, and I feel like that's obviously the fighting from spirit. what hell. She was in hell. Dog, her yeah. face was so bloody. And so, I don't like that. So she said, uh, because at the end of the night, uh, when she came to me, she said, okay, so Rashad said, she said, I didn't want him to stop it. I wanted to come back. I wanted back, and I know I could come back. Watching that fight. I didn't think she had anything for she her. Had, no, she couldn't she come was back. trying to come back. Well, I think Marina Rodriguez just disrespected her the whole time. Like, she didn't. She just kept walking forward. She, she wasn't phased by anything she did. And she couldn't stop the clinch. I have a question for you. What is this thing that Dominic Cruz keeps saying? A knee tap. What is that knee tap? That takedown. Oh yeah, yeah. Where you, you, you yeah, go Nick, upper body, that? grab the back of the knee, and then you just do this. Ooh. Just like that. To do oh. what? GSP used to do that all the time. Oh, for a takedown. That little knee tap. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Because okay. he kept giving her praise on that. So I just Bo nickel with her overhand, and then grab the outside leg. Mm. Oh, knee tap. And then they fall over because you got to respect something, you know. And it'll go into like a like a like an overhook. On the it was shoulder. weird, like you know. Obviously, clearly, clearly, her Marina's thing was to get the clinch, keep it in real tight, and just fuck her up on the inside, right? Which is very weird because Marina's so much longer than her. Yeah. So she wasn't, she couldn't pose a threat, or um, Michelle Watterson couldn't pro pose a threat to her in any facet. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm just going to get dirty going on the inside. Well, Marina's not bringing it on. My clinch game's fucking amazing. Also, her reach is bigger. She's taller. She's stronger. She's faster. What could she have done better? She, at she couldn't even lift her head up, right? Yeah. Like, she had her, her clinch. <laughs> Does, is that what her usual game is, Marina Rodriguez? Is she kind of a clinch lady? I don't know, but it looked like that's all she does. She's that a striker, though, for sure. Yeah, no, definitely. I feel like she's usually like more of a long-range striker, but like I don't remember her doing that much clinch. And I, I guess it makes sense for Michelle Watterson, right? Because for her to win, she's obviously a big – I don't even know what her path to victory is anymore, honestly. But usually it's kicking, right? Like yeah. she needs the range. So she's a striker. I guess Marina was like, I'm just going to smother her and just knee her in the fucking head. And she was significantly taller than her. How many inches was she taller than her? Like, probably 25. Probably 25 inches. Who knows? <laughs> Nobody knows. Nobody has the answers. 
<laughs> Bro, it, it, it was you just have a, to guess. It was such a weird fight because you usually see Watterson utilize her sidekick in those oblique kicks. She does like a teep sidekick typically yeah. to keep the distance. Yeah. And then instead for this, the tactic was to get in close, go for the takedown, wrestle. and just wrestle, which I don't think she really expected her to have such a good clinch game, and it fucked up her whole plan. Ugh. And she was just so much substantial. She was just so substantially stronger than her. She got bullied. Yeah. And it was so hard to watch. So my question is like, when do you know? When is it the time to hang up? Like how do now? you know? Okay, there it is. Nick says <laughs> now, <laughs> now. <laughs> but also she, you know, obviously like the fighting spirit is. I want to fight the best people in the world. Yeah, I can still do this. I can beat anybody, and that's what you need to be able to compete. She wouldn't go and fight Marino Rodriguez if she didn't think she could beat her. Obviously, right? But. Is that true? Uh, I think a lot of fighters think they can beat a lot of people and they shouldn't think that. Yeah, I think that's true, but it's like... BJ Penn? You can't stop him. Oh. BJ Penn. BJ Penn. You, you can't stop him. I thought Pete was about way. to jerk you off. He should have. <laughs> it was so funny because my legs were slowly open. Yeah, you were like, I went, Whoa. and I'm used to this. I'm used to this. Tell me Pete, next know. time you, you adjust our mics, you got to give us a little kiss on the forehead before. Oh, I can do that. Okay. That's oh. sweet. Yeah, I'll do that. I awesome. think it'll be something cool and exclusive to our show. Yeah. Hey, stop being gay and take it on the mouth like a man. <laughs> How about that? It's gonna mess with the audio level, dude. Just don't sue me, okay? No, I won't. Oh, impossible. Okay. Uh, Not on video. <laughs> but yeah, uh, speaking of like fighters retiring, uh, someone who I thought is close to that but didn't is Tim Means <gasps> on the prelims. Oh, Tim dude. Means beat a very, very good fight. What a fight, Tim! Very the good. Dirty Bird is he's he's such a tough fight for anybody. Dude, this motherfucker came in looking like a substitute teacher. Bro. <laughs> when I saw Tim Means walk in, dude, it's like he just taught world history. It's like, I might as well fight tonight. And he just came in. You He's know like, what was so You guys think about the Roman Empire? <laughs> ah! Dude, 33 and 15, man. He is a freaking legend. Bro. He was so. He doesn't get credit. He was so technically sound. He's so, so well rounded. It's so. He is the epitome of an MMA fighter. When I was watching him fight, I'm like, if I wanted to learn how to. You know, train in MMA. I'm gonna go to Tim Means because it seems like he has all the answers. Yeah, it was so. It was such a perfect like MMA fight. You know what I mean? He was good everywhere, even yeah. in the pocket. He was good at managing distance. He, dude, the cross to the body, Oof. dividends to the third when the third round hit. It was just so beautiful. It Fake. was such a fun fight. Mm -hmm. It was such a good matchup too. Yeah. How do you say his name? Phil Yao. Whatever. Fialo. Fialo. He, Fialo. He's a scary dude, right? And yeah. he's obviously a really great striker. And every time he put pressure on the Dirty Bird, he just stayed calm and then didn't react and then just started walking him down, finding a shot. I'll tell like, you this right now. Like, nothing if, like it. If the UFC allowed headbutt, Fiala would have knocked him out. That's just, <laughs> look at that dome. It's a big Jesus ass Christ. head. Christ. It looks like a light bulb. <laughs> what the fuck is that about, dude? Perfect circle, dude. Dude, I love it. Um, Size eight hat for sure, a hundred percent. Did he fight Cater? Uh, Cater? Who? Uh, Fialo? And he no, no, no. That's a different weight division, dude. Oh shit! Who did he fight? He fought. Um. He he's definitely on more. He fought. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Kevin Holland. Kevin Holland pieced him up, I think. Right. Yeah, I think, oh, I think he got dropped to like a Bravo. Joke. I think he fought a uh, right here, here Buckley too. No, Buckley. Matthews, damn, he's lost four in a row. You might—that's your walking papers right there. Sure. But at the same time, though, anytime he fights, he's just the fights are always good. It's like right there. But also, yeah. like anytime he fights, um, he gets KO'd. Dude, if they're gonna keep <laughs> like look at, look at this, four KOs. But if I'm Dana White, I'll be like, let's set him up with another guy. This is 170. We're like, let's set him up with fucking JDM next. Let's set him up with. There are certain fighters too, where you see them with the losing streak, mm -hmm. but. They, they, the, the UFC continues to sign them, and I also just think it's, it's because of the fights that they bring. Yeah. It's just very exciting. It so brings even, the ruckus, bro. Even if they lose, people still want to see them fight, and they put asses in seats. Anytime I see Phil Yao on a card, I'm like, oh, this is going to be a good fight, because mm -hmm. you know it's going to be a banger. He's game, and you know what? It, even in that fight, there was he had a lot of great moments, yeah. right? When he was fighting dirty in the pocket, and then Tim Means was having a little bit of trouble. But then Tim Means, too, he just, man, dude, he did everything perfectly sound. He, he stayed in there. Do you see how well he was slipping his cross and oh, going? It was ooh, so... Even with his height, he was fucking rolling under those hooks and hitting him with counters. It was yeah. fucking amazing, dude. It was it was a really fun technical fight. Anytime I, I see Tim Means fight, I'm always watching. Him and Mike Brown. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I always go for the old guys, dude. You Mike mean Matt Brown? Brown? My, yeah, Matt Brown, the immortal. I yeah, like Mike yeah, Brown, yeah. too. What's wrong with him? He's a great coach. No, no, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Because no. he hasn't I mean, fought since 2003. So, all right. It goes, back, it goes back to the point, retiring. So Tim Means doesn't look close to retiring, but he's up there. 
Bro, because you got to get out on top, dog. Like, the fight game. So, should I he think... retire soon? Like, maybe get another win and he's He was out. on a three-fight wait. skid before this. You said Tim Means retired? No, he said, like, so should he retire? He's older. We're talking oh, about I'm fighters late. that kind of retire when you're getting close to that 40 or, like, late 30s mark. But he's he just beat a young man. I mean, I say for for him like i don't know what his finances are like but with the with the show like this his next fight he could ask for more money so mm. I, I i i'm pretty sure that if he goes on the next card he gets a bigger paycheck he wins again i think he's just gonna go until he loses again what you said tim time. means is on a three <clears throat> fight losing streak he was before he was. this can i see the fight who, who do you lose to uh, because I remember it's like pretty top contenders, uh, right? Zhang Wei Li. It's all Chinese female fighters. Go to full profile. Oh, he lost to Morono. Yeah, Kevin that's Holland, right. See, Morono was Griffin. his last fight. And Morono's a high level. Morono's another one of those guys who is like he's under the radar, but he just he just he beats all these really good guys too, yeah. <laughs> which you kind of forget about him. You know, his his uh stance and his footwork is so weird. He's always on his tippy toes. Yeah, Morono's the only person I know that fights like that. He fights like he's walking on hot coals. Mm. I don't get it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know who taught him that shit. It's amazing. Um. Oh, uh, guys. Also, uh, Brian Battle, dude, talk about a comeback. Uh, I think I got dropped. I think the first round and second round he came back with that Choking. RNC. That's right. We chose Brian Battle, right? Yeah, to win. I think so. I think we did. We there also we hey, you know what? We're Gilbert, right. So. Yeah, dude. What's the backlash with the all of Mexico? You calling Rosas okay. uh, a blobfish? Dude. Listen, I love his vibe, but every time I look at his face, <laughs> I see that blobfish in the deep sea. <laughs> so is look, the Mexican fan are the Mexican fans pissed? When yeah. we're when we're on this channel, right? Listen, there's nobody sponsoring us really right now, so I can say whatever I want. So I'm gonna keep doing it. Dude, yeah. the Mexico Embassy is sponsoring us. Oh, are they? <laughs> He's handsome. He's, He's so honestly, beautiful. He is. He is the He's so beautiful. The stereotypical handsome Mexican guy. <laughs> <laughs> is Mexico mad at me now? I bet you're mad at me now, aren't you? I think they're lying. He's like, I oh, simply lying. said what everybody was thinking. True. He okay. does look like a blobfish. Handsome Squidward. Handsome. Right? That might have been better. Handsome Squidward. That's right. Like that. Handsome Squidward. Squidward. Nick without the upper teeth. That that's, was fucking. That's hilarious. all I said. <laughs> When when you said he looked like a blobfish, I go, I kind of look like a blobfish, so I could see it. <laughs> so I hey, I could say it. that. Yeah, you I could say that. Hey, but you got married and it's your anniversary today. Yeah, thanks. How long have you guys been together? We've been together thirteen years. Thirteen years. years. Yeah. Wow. But we're talking about MMA. We're not talking about. <laughs> no, 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 no. He hates we're it. Not he doesn't like being in the about spotlight. This. So what's it like being in love for over a decade? It's hard. It's hard work, dude. Yeah. It takes dedication. Yeah. And it takes. Why are you turning into a Brooklyn guy? No, it's. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's hard work, okay? Yeah, yeah. When I get cornered, I feel weird, dude. So I, I talk funny. Well, congratulations Thank you. Thank on you. 13 years, man. Yeah, thanks, that is. Uh... This is our, our third year uh, wedding anniversary. Wow. Uh, what are you going to do for her, though? Be honest, man. We're gonna um, we're gonna go have dinner. sex. Shop. Yeah, you can have sex. You have a lot of sex. Huh? I might the... let her leave it in, dude. Who knows? Oh, <laughs> nice, yeah, dude. dude. Leave it in. Okay, you're gonna have eye contact this time when you have sex, huh? Uh, it's it's a little much, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe on the fourth year. <laughs> Speaking of leaving it in, you know who didn't leave it in? Who was well, how you ACL? Oh, it came out, guys. That's me. That dude. fight was. It was looking good. I was excited. Hey, our pick was right up until that point. He won the oh. first round. You know what was nuts too? I thought he broke his foot, but it was from the kick. He's a left leg. <laughs> it was, it was, the, it was right the planting leg, foot. and it was the planting leg. So what is it? Because he threw it with his foot completely planted, and he didn't have his. I I think it was because his knee when he I, rotated. I, he didn't pivot. I, didn't I don't think pivot. he pivoted he open. So it went. Oh. Wow. And he was he was throwing kicks with such velocity in that fight. He's and, scary, huh? And Gamrot was yeah. just he would he just kept. Pulling back because he had to. Because if I saw one, those two, kicks, he cracked him, bomb, and he oh. dropped him. Ooh. Dude, imagine taking one of those kicks just to the arms. Oh, yeah. Dominic so Cruz scary. thought that he uh, broke his foot off the kick. I did too. He was, Isn't it crazy how like one commentator says it and you're like, yeah, I could totally see it. He broke his fucking foot on the elbow. <laughs> <laughs> you just automatically agree with whatever he's saying. I was like, Michael Bisping, chill out. Listen, I'm not. I'm not. Look, I think Gamrot's dope. I'm not his biggest fan because he keeps on getting gifted wins. Dude, I knew you were going to say that because I was feeling, I was like, damn, there must be something to it. Yeah, yeah. he's definitely. Because like, Armin Sarukian is my guy, and he should have beat, he should have won 
against Gamrot. I'm, it's just I'm gonna hold that against Gamrot forever because the the weird thing is, is like Gamrot even after that fight he celebrated as if he won and clearly he lost that. I was thinking about that too, but I fucking would have too, bro. Yeah, but you're a loser. That's different. <laughs> He's a UFC fighter, right? Don't compare Man. Gamrot to you. Yeah, you it, fucking blobfish. Yeah. <laughs> Go to the deep sea, bitch. They don't even live that deep, okay? So they are. They are deep out. sea fish, and are originally they? they don't even look like that. They only look like that because when you drag them up to the surface, it fucks up with their shit. You would know. That. All right, nerd. Yeah, fucking nerd. <laughs> the pH levels are too low down there. Oh, um, hey, there's a bomb in there. <laughs> <laughs> Show me your leadership capabilities. <laughs> Bob and Dill. Fucking love um, but I will say that watching that fight, it made me even it, it rose the stock in my mind for uh for Zev. The guy, his scramble oh. from takedowns, Dude, so good, amazing, man. so fast, so quick, back on the feet, no problem. That guy, I'm gonna say champion. Fighting at least for a championship he, he in looked, a couple years. He looked better than he did with Justin Gaethje. Yes. Know? And I think he's just continually getting better. He's super fucking young. And that just goes to show how powerful his kicks are to where it tore out his other fucking knee. Yeah, dude. He's a muscle <laughs> yeah, guy. Dude, I'm so good. I keep tearing my ACL. <laughs> but also all the all the the defensive scrambles. Yeah. They were in some weird positions. A lot yeah. of hopping, a lot of like and like you said, Vizev Viziev? Fazeev. Fazeev. is a very explosive guy. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it does make sense he blew his fucking ace. I mean, that's the hard part, too. I, I only know this because I have fucked up knees, but you know, like when you like throw a low kick, right? Typically, like people always tell you that when you when you throw a kick, you rotate out mm -hmm. and you're on the ball of your foot. Open but it. with a low kick, you, you rarely ever see people do that. They usually plant their feet because it's a little more stable. But the trade off with that is that there's a lot of fucking pressure on your knee. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel that every fucking time, like whenever I went to like Muay Thai classes, they were like, hey, make sure you plant it for more stability. But I have to lift my heel because there's too much pressure on my knee. Or at least fucking open it, you know? Yeah. I mean, he just kind of planted and just twisted and just. Ugh. Popped it out. That is, it's very unfortunate. So fucking painful. I was a that was a bummer because you. I do want to see these high level Muay Thai guys do well in the UFC, especially when you watch like the one FC guys. Oh yeah. Oh, you watch those high level Muay Thai dudes and you wonder like how would they do in the UFC? Well, why don't we go there? Who are you talking about specifically? We're talking about. The man. He doesn't know the name. The man. Yeah. He, he blanked out Ron completely. Tang, dude. dude. We're talking about Skywalker Super Lek. <laughs> that will just start Check to say random dung. shit. Check Check dung. Dung. Yeah. Uh, it, Super Lek is the fucking man, dude. It's so. And dark. it's nice because it's just one name. You don't have to worry about their first and the last name. It's just Super Lek. Well, if they had to put their first and last name, it would cover up the whole say screen. Say that. <laughs> Moon oh, yeah. Yeah, he, oh, his name yeah, has, has a, a nine. number. Has a nine in it. Has a nine. <laughs> I'm saying, like, do you, have you heard, have you seen like a full first and last name of a Thai person? Oh, it's good. Really, luck. It looks like a it's typo. Stupid. Like, remember when we were trying keyboard. to say it for the raw tang videos, and I uh, couldn't say raw tangs. Jitmong that do that, and then when you say it, you feel like you're racist. Yeah, you feel like you're racist. It's raw like, tang. It. I'm lady boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no. lady boy. Really? Yes. I'm, I'm lady boy. <laughs> yes, lady, lady boy. boy. You're not a you're not a boy. Yes, lady, lady boy. boy. That was the best part. The guy telling her, "Please tell me you're not a boy. <laughs> I'm a boy." <laughs> no, no. I'm lady boy. It's not going to change. <laughs> I'm a boy. <laughs> Pepper down there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Superlek uh, versus Rotang at this... one FC. First of all, I didn't. I forgot that one FC only does four ounce gloves. Yeah, fuck that. Well, yeah. they they do different Muay Thai rules, but when they do Muay Thai with MMA gloves, it's insanity. I can't it's... even believe it. So everything changes up, right? And you'll see uh, a conversation with uh, uh, the Punisher, Liam. Liam. Harris. Liam Harris, right? So he he talks about this in his first 1FC fight. The one thing that he didn't really adapt for is how to change his guard and using, like, the long guard because he's mm. so used to having big gloves block everything. Yeah. Uh, so when he, okay. when he first went into 1FC, he had a lot of trouble. He was getting hit a lot because he forgot that the smaller gloves changes your defense. Yeah. Right. So I thought that was pretty fascinating. You're seeing it with these That fights. is true because with bigger gloves, you kind of just shell too, right? Yeah. You just hide there. How you shell up is different. It has to be a lot tighter because there's that huge gap in the middle. Now that you have these smaller gloves, like when you use long guard too, it's different because now you just have this small little glove covering your face versus, you know, everything else. But this was such an amazing fight, man. Like, Rod, first of all, super like uh, missed weight by five pounds. A lot of people yeah. forgot about that You're shit. You're a big boy. Didn't he get crowned champion? 
No, no, no. So there was nothing on the line because he missed weight. Got it. Uh, is he is he coming down in weight to fight Rod Ting? I think so. Happened? I think or Rod Ting is going up in weight. Okay, because they do not look the same size. Yeah, because yeah, I think Rod Ting. Yeah, look how. Yeah, and so, they're buddies too. They're like yep. they're like really good friends. Oh, dude, the elbows. Oh. oh. Like the way, and it, this is why it's see, really cool to see high level Muay Thai like this is because you don't really see this in like the UFC or MMA. Oh no, the no, no, way no. they like, move is so different. Just the way they throw their kicks and just the, look how close they are. They're right in front of each other. You know, like they're not moving back. It's all timing. <laughs> it's all setups. Every time they would clinch and Rod Tang oh. would exit or enter, he's throwing just the nastiest elbows. Like the one that cut up Superlek in the first oh, fight. That, that elbow, little right? over top. Oh, oh, and just driving upwards and it just split oh and then he's like spitting blood out of his face it's in the middle of these exchanges i mean it's literally two different weight classes yeah here. It's, it's, it's not even different same. sizes it's crazy and rod tang is Ooh. still not even taking a step back mm -hmm. he's walking him down just the whole time but wait how is he going up in weight if he is the current champion and they're both current champions I yeah think. but he's listed as one and he's champion. dude i don't ego. know tell us nick you we look, don't know who's the closest to them come on <laughs> bro <laughs> this was just like a – there was supposed to be another super fight, too. It was supposed to be uh, Super Bon versus uh, – Oh, Tawan Chi. Yeah, Tawan Chai. Tawan Chai. Tawan Chai? That's the Japanese dude, right? He, uh, no, no, what's... no, no, no. Tawan Chai is the guy with no expression on his face and just starts killing people. Yeah, he oh. looks he, – He's yeah, dude. He looks like a sweet, sweet boy. But he's going to fight uh, Smokin' Joe. I think that's the replacement. <laughs> I love how you said all these names. Stupata, Stupata, and Smoking <laughs> Joe. Smoking <laughs> Joe. That classic <laughs> Thai fighter, Smoking Joe. Smoking that's Joe. That's my favorite Smoking fighter. Joe, Tawa Kam Ken Kong. Listen. <laughs> Great. Let's have all Thai people in the chat. Hit Bro, Thai people love me, dude. They know that when I imitate the language, it's pretty similar. It's also correct. Dude, yeah. look at this it's fucking... All... Look how bloody he is. But also, like, Ooh, I'm look surprised... That face. Look at that face. Woo! The UFC better hop on... And get some of these dudes and bring them to the to MMA, man. They, I mean, the UFC is going to start taking up some Bellator guys because apparently Bellator is look, going out of look business. At this, look at really? Rod King's yeah. fucking face, dude. He's just ready to go. You don't give a fuck, dude. Look at this shit. I'm going to grow my mustache out like Rod Tang. Yeah. Oh, and not look. Can you cool grow a mustache? It would probably like if I took me three months, it looked like Rod Tang's right now. Wait, do you? Can you? No. God, why are you sound so, so surprised? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I shaved two days ago, and this is what I have. <laughs> but you didn't shave anything. It was just your skin. <laughs> just my skin. <laughs> You know what's so sad, and I'm gonna openly admit this. I sometimes there's this, so there's this barber shop out in South, South Pasadena. I always walk by. Yeah. I get a little sad because I see people get the whole. I want yeah, that. Too, I want man. that. Dude, like the towel, and I, I get embarrassed because I want to know what it feels like, but they have nothing to shave. Yeah. So like, I don't want to just go in there. It's like, hey, can I get the full beard thing? And they're like, for what, little boy? Yeah. <laughs> you should just get your own razor at home. I bled a boy. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah. We'll say I bled a boy. Shave my beard. What you want, lady boy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so this uh, fight, first round, I would say we gave it to Rod Tang, probably, right? Most damage, cut him open. Second round, there was a... Did you guys think that was the a knockdown? knockdown? Yeah, that Some was people a were, weird. It was kind of, uh, I'll put it to that. But, uh, I think that was a knockdown. It looked like a push, though. Like a push, he got pushed out, and then the Let's connect see. happened Let's after. That's what I thought. Yeah. Bro, like... Oh, but I will say this. Super like came out firing in Dude, the second round. Dude, these... The knees, right here, bro. Right here, look at this. Oh. Is this oh. the knockdown? Oi. Is that knockdown? Yeah, well, he turned or his he, head. But look, look. Yeah, he threw yeah, that. Yeah. He stepped in with that right elbow, bro. That's a legit elbow. See, look. He's like, I'm fine. It was nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Please. But that's 300 fight veteran experience. If he'd just be like, come on. Yeah. What are you going to do? So what do you think? Knockdown? I think... Uh... Because that's what knockdown. gave him the round, super yeah. lucky round. So I say yeah. no knockdown. You say knockdown. I, I kind of feel like Rod Tang won the fight. I thought he won the fight too. Hey, but also too. like it, it's not like Super Leg was it there the whole time. Oy! But I think the body language of Super Leg. Yeah. Like he just kind of was. He looked like he wore the damage a little bit more, and Rod Tang was just like just a Terminator, just like classic Rod Tang. Like round three is where you got to see how much Super Leg waned. Like he was super tired. But even yeah. when he was tired, he was still landing he was great bombs. shots. Yeah. But it's not bombs. anyone's fault that Rod Tang was just eating them and just walking forward. Bro, it's crazy to watch. Nothing this phases fight. this guy. Yeah, put this shit to fucking five rounds and see oh. what happens, dude. Super yeah. Leg would not be standing. Either way. I was surprised it was only three rounds. Is that normal yeah. for a Muay Thai? Maybe it's because he didn't make weight. May yeah. Oh, Who knows? I mean, five pounds is, is that? Who's that? That's uh, the guy from K1. His name is... Uh, is that I thought that was Anthony Lee. Takaru. <laughs> he's Takaru. a really... He's, he's like the, the champ uh, uh, K1. He's he's legit. He's super legit. Look at this shit, dude. You know what this makes me wish? Oh! 
This what? makes me wish Tenshin Nasukawa was still fighting. He he retired, right? He fought, after he, retired he lost from the Floyd. Kickboxing. Was that after Floyd? No, 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 no. He was after he just beat a bunch. Of like if asses. if this do, if uh, Takaru, whatever his name is, Takaru, Takaru, Honestly, Kokoro, man, you're saying Kokoro. a bunch of dishes right now. Whatever. Yeah. Well, if he Akiruro. if he's there and they're showing him, that means he's gonna fight for one FC. Imagine if Tenshin was fighting one FC against you, these guys. You know, it sucks. I feel like a lot of people don't know. Thank God for one FC putting Muay Thai like traditional Muay Thai like with oh. this platform. I feel like. What a missed opportunity to put this sport oh, in the Western audience. That's yeah. what I mean. Like, if the UFC just, like, if Zufa Bo- or whatever it is, just created a league, Muay a Thai, Thai league. league or kickboxing, yeah. it's only, and then they put all the promotion oh. behind it, bro, this would destroy. So if you guys don't know, if you're listening to this and you only watch UFC, like, Tenshin Nasakawa is amazing. He's so one good. of the craziest he, kickboxers I've ever seen. He can do anything, dude. Super fast, super quick. His setups are fucking amazing. His stance, he's just... So explosive, yeah. dude. Like, watching him fight. So, uh, the only thing people know him for is for that Mayweather boxing Which fight. is such a shame. It is. First of all, Mayweather's like 40 pounds heavier than him. Yeah. yeah. But also, Tension was, he was selling it, bro. Oh, yeah. The little, wow, wow, yeah, wow. Dude, he was, what, he was, was getting that, stone cold was, stunnered all across the ring. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it was Kutilaba or whatever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, I'm rocked. I'm rocked. <laughs> Wait, do you think that was set up? I think so a little bit, yeah. but apparently that's what they do in, in like the like the Japanese fight game. It's yeah, like whenever there's a but that crying looked real. Yeah, it looked real. He was, he, he sold sad. it, dude. Was I sad. feel like there was Japanese mafia involved. Yakuza, yeah. little yakuza there. If you don't destroy the fight, you die. <laughs> that <laughs> was a kind of Russian. No, no, it's <laughs> that a, it's was a, kind of a bad fight. <laughs> Maybe net. I don't know. Net, net. Fizzive. What a crazy fight, man. Yeah. But, it's what a time to be alive, man. We get to see shit like the this. one FC fights, man. They're so fucking fun. Like these guys just strike so differently. They're not scared to sit there and throw. But even when they get connected with the hard shot, they're still game. They're, they're right there. They're not getting rocked because their what? eyes are so good. They're seeing all that shit. All right. Question for both of you. Muay Thai. Do these guys, do they stack up against, let's say, the top level glory Holland style kickboxers? Because I, I look at this. I honestly feel like, look. They would destroy me, but they're all, I feel like they're all playing with the same tools. It's just who's better at the tools of the, let's say, 12 tools, where you watch like a Holland kickboxer, or even like a MMA guy, like a TJ Dillashaw or something. They look, they all look different, like video game characters, mm. where it's like they have 45 tools and they're all different. They all seem like the same fighter. It's just who's better at the same game. I think it's Is the that- rule set. Mm. That really changes because the rule set in like a glory style or Dutch Ooh. European style kickboxing, they bounce around. Is is you can't clinch, and if you clinch, it's like one to two seconds, and they break it up. Yeah. There's no elbows. Um, I think they could they could throw knees to the head, right? Yeah, they could. Yeah, they could throw head. knees to the head. The, it's it's interesting, right? Like styles always make fights. So one of the greatest examples of that, if you watch one of my favorite Taekwondo fighters of all time, Raymond Daniels. Oh right? man, <clears throat> Raymond Raymond Daniels when he fought Bazooka Joe, it was it was very telling of how styles make fights because Raymond Daniels, who's very explosive, super long, uses all these great fancy kicks, right? And he's really great with his hands too. Had a lot of trouble with Bazooka Joe because. In the ring, there are very specific shark when he kept cornering him and throwing those leg kicks, started taking away his biggest weapons. Well, Bazooka Joe, who's... <clears throat> who's That's a beautiful man, by the way. Oh, beautiful. Sexy as hell, strong as shit. Took out his fucking legs, and he took basically what he does really well, which is to create space and move around. But watch. Puts him in these corners. Pressing him. He's got that... Presses him. He's got that sport karate. Yep. That, I remember used to, I used to compete. I would see Raymond Daniels. We'd all be watching him fight. Sport karate, it's crazy. Sport karate, I said taekwondo. My bad. I wanted to be Korean so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, I mean, let's be honest. It's the same balance. Yeah, it's same. I'm a Korean supremacist, so <laughs> it is what it is. Watch. But like, even when Raymond Daniels fought Nikki Holskin, he fought mm-hmm. him like what two, three times. Mm-hmm. Um, same type of deal. It's just Ooh. like you gotta just if you're willing to stand in front of Raymond Daniels, you'd rather be chest to chest, forehead to forehead with him yeah. and at K his kicking range. Because yeah. the shit that Raymond Daniels does is out of a movie, bro. But like so like Raymond Daniels, right? I think this do you think this his style in a kickboxing format works against a rod tank or super leg in a Muay Thai style? Would that actually throw them off? I think the 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 biggest trouble that Raymond Daniels would have is with the clinch game. Like once he gets tied up yeah. It's going to be a problem. And also, too, they're not scared of the darting forward hits. They'll shell up and they'll take those hits and they'll keep pressuring him forward because it's on Raymond Daniels to keep this style of fighting up for all these rounds. And specifically, like explosive fighters like these, you'll always see towards the later rounds, 
this doesn't happen. Mm. Their first, second round is always the most successful. Because imagine doing this, hopping around for X amount of minutes. And going backwards. A- MVP. And we, going backwards. We see it with MVP all the time. Third round, mm-hmm. he's dead. Exactly. It's just a difficult style to do. Like I said, it's he's obviously now 44 or 45 he's years older. old. Yeah. In here, he's what, 39 or 38? And also, too, right? We saw there sh- with Sean Strickland in Israel. Mm. The guy who's moving forward is dictating the pace, right? And it's hard when you're playing counter and you can't land anything substantial. You can't really dictate the pace as well as a guy who's just walking you down the whole time. Because mm-hmm. eventually, like you said, they're going to get tired. And it's 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 like that in wrestling. It's like that in jiu-jitsu. The guy who's Bam. moving forward with their game plan and who's initiating action mm-hmm. is always probably going to win. And as, as like this fight continues to progress, if you guys have the time to go watch this later, you're going to watch him start cutting him off and kind of getting him to go to the side that he wants, throwing that leg, like continually taking it out. Yeah. And it just became a part of the game plan. And as the fight goes longer, Raymond Daniels has more and more trouble. And it doesn't mean that, obviously, the fight after this, if you guys watch, he does his famous knockout. Yeah. He, where he steps, where he does the uh, little, what do you call it, the Gilbo, where he does that little thing where he taps here and he, does the two touch? Oh, the two touch. Taekwondo. That's a Taekwondo move. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he he wins his next the fight Korean after move. his loss. Koreans only, dude. Koreans win Creative at everything, it. minus that war against Japan. But <laughs> that's a do over. Yeah. You know what I say? Good. You know what I that was a long time ago. That's a long you know time what ago. What I say about that? I'm Lady Boy. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right, just for context. How did you for, play that? For our audience, <laughs> just so you have context. We need to address this. So people are like, man, are they just saying this dumb thing? No, no, no. This is hot guy dude. You're not a lady? Yes. What are you? I'm Lady Boy. Okay. I'm here for the ladies. <laughs> Boys. <laughs> My name is Virgin. Virgin? This yeah, is the most yeah, beautiful. Tonight, I don't think Let so. me tell <laughs> What's your name? I'm Sukas. Sukas. What? what kind you, of uh, fucking yes. boy looks okay. like that? Dude, the best kind. I feel like I could be a pretty <laughs> the best, best guy. Hey, you guys think I could be a good lady boy? Absolutely. You think I'd be Jesus pretty, bro? Christ, dude. Like, like, I'm a blob of fish. I know. I'm, <laughs> I'm blob of fish. fish. <laughs> no farming face. But yes, uh, that fight. Hopefully, there's a rematch. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, I, 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 I doubt there's going to be a rematch. I think it was just for, for, for shits and giggles. God, uh, if so they want to do it a re- through a rematch, then somebody has to make weight super leg because that five pound advantage is a lot. Yeah, but going back to your question, I think the Thai guys, I think they beat fucking... a guy that moves around like a Raymond and a Muay Thai them. rule set. I think, yeah. yeah, it's it's hard to beat the ties at their own rules, and and also the volume of fights that they have. Oh yeah, like yeah. you're gonna beat a guy who yeah, had, who's had fucking... 300 fights, yeah, what's the deal and he's with that? 22. 300 fights. It's because they fight when they're younger because they got to make money. Yeah, and that's the way they make money. I was watching this documentary, and they were talking about a lot of these young Thai boys who live at these Thai like. What do you mean, Thai boys? What, what do you mean by Thai boys specifically? Okay, come on, guys. Just regular get, boys. Get yeah. your name. Get your fucking <laughs> brain out the gutter. All right, I'm talking about hookers. You started the show <laughs> with lady boys. Talking about okay. hookers right now. <laughs> no, but these young kids, they're orphans. Yeah, and so they're literally fighting for food, money, payment to have a roof over their head. So they're all orphans. Not all, but a lot of them are orphan children. Hear that, guys? The Thai them. boys are all orphans. No, this is okay. You know what? If you're gonna take sound bites away from me, <laughs> do the lady boy one instead. <laughs> Fine, not use this one. that one. Okay. Yeah, All that right, one's deal. okay. I'm not trying to get canceled. <laughs> deal. Jesus Christ, lady boy. <laughs> I'll, I'll stop. There's a bomb in deal. All right, uh, all right, guys. Just want to get your take on this. Francis and Ganu. Uh, hitting some pads. And Mike, Mike Tyson always coaching MMA fighters for some reason. Look at those sock and bop em arms, dude. They're so long. I want to see what your guys... First of all, what do you guys think about the fight? Uh, does Nganu even have a chance? And then w- looking at this open workout of just him boxing, what do you think about his speed, uh, power maybe? Or Take it away, Nick. Look, dude, you know, mitt work is always going to be... Some guys look terrible in the mitts, but as soon as they fight, they knock everybody out. Yeah. Here's my thing with Francis. Even in MMA, you look at his mitt work, he's always, like, doing proper technique. But when he fights, he just swings. Yeah. Because I would fucking, too, man. If I had that, if I just had a big old right hand who could knock people out, yeah, I would just do that instead. But Tyson Fury, bro, is another, another level. level. Oh. He's, what, seven feet tall? Yeah. The Gypsy King, dude. And he, he his movement is so good. He has a, such a great jab. He has great tactics. Uh, it's his sport. You know, he's been mm. doing it way longer. It's like, yeah, does Francis have a puncher's chance? Yeah, everyone has a puncher's chance in a boxing match. But You know, if Nganu, listen, every it's like, it's like this, exactly. Everybody has a puncher's chance, right? So I'll never say that 
and Gano does has a zero percent chance yeah, yeah, of winning. Yeah. That's absolutely not true. But he's stepping into Tyson Fury's world. This is yeah. his world. And you're telling me right now that Francis Ngannou can hit that much harder than Deontay Wilder? Probably not. Deontay honestly. Wilder literally knocks somebody out by punching them on their fucking forehead. What is that about? Yeah. That makes no sense at all. Yeah. He knocked the spirit out of that guy. Dude, Deontay and Francis, that'd be a fun That's what I wanted to that, see. That's a fun fight. I that'd thought that a was a better fight. fight. That's a much better fight. Power for fucking power. But, you know, like, <clears throat> listen, a while ago I put out this tweet for Ngannou, and I was like, I didn't – I didn't agree with him do, going this route, right? Because it, it went on for quite a while. It didn't seem like anything was going to happen. And it wasn't because... What do you I, mean, pertaining to the contract with UFC? Or, yeah, and okay. everything else. Because the UFC actually gave him a really fat deal. It was an $8 million contract just for the John Jones fight. Yeah. One fight, dude. That's just one fight, good. right? And then for the PFL, I believe it was the same, It was something similar, but he gets a piece of the PFL. And the argument behind that was, okay, so you get a piece of the PFL, so you get 0% or you get like whatever, 20% of nothing. Yeah. Who the fuck cares? It's the yeah. PFL. Not disrespecting the PFL. Yeah. But disrespect yeah, you are at the same PF, time. You definitely did. But <laughs> clip that. So rude. The only reason why I said that it was just because of my selfishness. I wanted to see Nganu stay in the UFC and fight the best of the best. I know. That's all that it is. Because I feel like his reign in the UFC could have been way better than just a one and done fight with Tyson Fury. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like I could I could see Francis beating John Jones. Is that an easy fight for any of them? No. no. But I could see him yeah. beating John Jones versus Beating Tyson Fury, I just think the odds are more in the favor if he stayed in MMA. If he gets starched by Tyson Fury, does that ruin his stock? Like, does UFC take no. him back? It doesn't ruin his stock at all because it's not his sport. So the only thing that he has really to lose is just the match. But other than that, he, he gets his money, yeah. right? So who knows what the amount is that he's actually going to get paid because it was in Saudi Arabia. So there's probably an oh. undisclosed amount. Dude, he's getting paid sketchy out. stuff over there. Exactly. So he's getting his money's worth. Now, in terms of his legacy as a fighter, honestly, it's dead now, in my personal opinion. Really? Do you I, think Conor's legacy is dead? Connor's the- legacy is already set because he was the double champ. Francis Ngannou never really – he was like in the period of heavyweights that nobody really cared about heavyweights. And you have to realize too, one of the things that the UFC probably mentioned or didn't mention was that he couldn't sell fights. His pay-per-views were selling 300K at most. That's pretty wild. So for him on his contract, when he got that $8 million for the – type of pay-per-views that he was selling for the amount was actually a lot. It was very yeah. fucking generous. And I, and I feel like if he stayed, he could have been even a bigger star. Win, lose against John Jones, he yeah. still would have been... Endorsements. Yeah, because it's... <sighs> I think he just didn't like the way the UFC was treating him, and it was a big fuck you to them. So, great for Francis Ngannou. Yeah. Uh, when he, on the Joe Rogan podcast when he was there, he was stating that uh, oh. in the contract, he was offered like only $1.50 per each pay-per-view, pay-per-view. buy. Which they what pay per views go for eighty bucks now? Eighty bucks, seventy nine ninety nine. So and you guys pay for all of them. Yes, yeah, I of do. course I do. I pay for all of them. So I don't know if that's a good or bad deal. Sounds like a pretty bad deal, but maybe on the UFC and like I said, I'm not a UFC show. I'm just I'm just kind of thinking of alternative thoughts. It's like you only sell three hundred k pay per view buys. So what makes you think that you could walk away with half of this? Yeah, like we don't make enough off of you anyways. So I don't know how that really works. And and the problem with that is that when he signs to a UFC contract, he's stuck to that deal until the end of the term. He doesn't get to rene- renegotiate it. Mm-hmm. So let's say after the John Jones fight, right? Well, that John Jones fight, the pay-per-view buys were like a million. Well, he only gets a dollar fifty, and then he gets a bigger name. The next paper, he still gets a dollar fifty until that contract's mm-hmm. up. So that's what he was okay. So I could sense. I could see where his position is. Like I fuck with Francis Ngannou a lot. Do I think that he's going to win this fight? Probably not. Hopefully yeah. he just gets the bag and just rides off in the sunset. Where do you guys sit with that uh, when it comes to, like, fighters and the UFC? The UFC, not your typical promotion, like a boxing promotion. It's, like, a brand that, like, puts all their money into pushing the fighters and takes care of everything. Uh, but then you also have the fighters that are want more fighter pay. They should probably start a fighters union. Where do you guys sit in the balance between the UFC and the fighter and who should have more money? Like, it's not the same as, I don't think, the NBA where it's, like, a 50-50 split. Like, where do you sit? Like, the UFC is giving the opportunity, or you need the fighters to sell the brand? I think as the the sport grows, because it's still in a very early stage, right? The fact that they've been on ESPN for how many years now? Maybe, like, two, three years? A couple, yeah. They were on Fox right? before that. Yeah. Right? So it's like... And then Fuel TV before that. Yeah, Fuel oh TV. My God. Dude, oh, my goodness. Um, but I, I just feel like the sport's still really young, right? Like, in the next 10 years, hopefully they're, these fighters are getting NBA money. You know, like where well, they're gonna grow with the sport, and it's watched. Every, it's a national sport, right? It, and also, yeah. too, it's it has worldwide appeal. So, or does it ever get to that point, or is it straight up still prize fighting at its core? 
and the big stars are the only ones that get paid. I mean, if you want to compare it to boxing, right? So there's yeah. a weird comparison where they go, oh, look at Canelo, look at Mayweather. Mm -hmm. They make X amount of money. Well, you're looking at these outsiders, right? So you're comparing like John Jones to like Mayweather's money. Mayweather had to buy himself out of his contract. Right, and he started up his own thing, so he does own everything promotion, from, yeah. from top to bottom. So he's the whole. Promotion. He takes the risk. That's the other thing right. with the boxing, right? Mm -hmm. It's like there's a millions of different organizations and promotions, and they all have to work together to come to a deal to put on a fight. Why like it's impossible to see fucking fights in boxing? Yeah, yeah. But for the UFC, they have all their fighters under one umbrella, so they can make those super fights that the fans want to see. So it does make it more appealing. That's why the 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 rise of the sport has gotten a lot faster in boxing. Than boxing yeah, yeah. until Jake Paul came around and fucking flipped it changed on his head. the game, you know. But um, I think if it continues to grow that way, maybe it can be as big of a brand as the NFL or the NBA, especially when they merge with the WWE. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean here's the here's the other thing too. Like people don't ever talk about uh, boxing fighter pay outside of people like Canelo. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or some of these other like top boxers. These other fighters who are on these cards, they're getting paid fucking next to nothing. Yeah. They don't have a UFC PI. They don't have people like sending them. They don't have any of this type of shit. They literally just have the clothes that they buy and sponsors that they have to scrounge around for when nobody knows their fucking name. Mm -hmm. When you when you sign to the UFC, right, and you say I'm a UFC fighter, it opens up so much sponsorship possibilities. If you walk up and you say, Oh, I'm a bo I'm a pro boxer, nobody gives a cool. fuck. Who cares? Who the fuck cares? You say so UFC fighter, it changes up everything. Thing. Yeah, it changes up your sponsorships. It changes up how people approach you, how brands approach you, and now the it's following like, your social media following. Exactly, who cares about a pro boxer that's a champion. A hundred percent. Like there's there's great boxers out there who are still on these undercards who people don't know about, and they get paid fucking absolutely yeah. nothing. And it's sad versus like the UFC. Once you attach, you know, to what you were saying, like does the UFC get any credit for actually building these people's names up? Like when you're attached to us, you're a different person mm -hmm. now. You are now a. Even when I see when I, if I hear anybody on the card right like we okay on a serious note i make a lot of jokes about fighters or whatever whatnot because i'm trying to be funny but in all reality if you're in the ufc it's amazing to me yeah i yeah. don't give a fuck if you are the lowest person on the roster it is fucking amazing to me yeah like to me you just you're, you're, you're there you did something that a lot of people can't do mm -hmm. so it's it's kind of like comparing apples and oranges like what what are you really looking at right now like who's who's better i don't really fucking know all i know is that Angano got a fucking bag on him dude so <laughs> you are trying to say though is that you're on the side with the UFC? I'm a Dana Fighters White be happy. dude. <laughs> I'm a Dana White apologist. Here we go, baby. I love slap boxing. It's well, especially. <laughs> but, but I love wait, it. first of all, wait. power slap. Yes, yay or nay? Honestly, yay or nay? Yay. Really? Whoa! Hey, and that tongue came out like a weirdo. Oh, I feel bad for your wife. Yay. Jesus. There's no delicacy to that at all. Oh, My fucking libido disappeared really yeah, same fast. Same here. What the fuck was hey, that? Well, you're that's like, your loss, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Ask my wife about it. <laughs> she it. hates it too. Celibate. <laughs> I'm an incel, but I'm married. <laughs> I hate women. I'm also married. If you guys, if you guys are listening, take the time to go to the first Francis Ngannou interview with Joe Rogan, and you'll get to see where this man came from. Bro, insane. M made me tear up, dude. There were some moments where I was just like, dude. Nobody can say shit to this man. You don't know what the fuck. Yeah, give us do. a little bit of that uh, interview. How did it sound? <laughs> <laughs> what did he talk say about, talk about his accent? Talk about dig uh, digging a hole. Uh, I had to go dig a hole in the in the desert. <laughs> I don't know for the reason. I don't know. It don't matter for the reason. Okay, so Dana wants to tell me to, to fight here. I don't care for the reason. <laughs> That's really good. Dude. Yo, that's fire. <laughs> I love it, Ghana, dude. Ah, God, that's so good. I guys. ate like shit. I went to Fogo de Chao. I had, I had so Fogo much. Fogo de Chao. Chao. That's Francis Ghana's favorite restaurant. I forgot to put the, the red slip, so I keep getting so much meat. They, they, they kept giving me meat. I could not prepare for my fight. It was crazy. I could not do it. Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Francis and God, dude, bro. I love it. Yo. It's weird, like people from like camera. Yo, like, editor, put David's face in black. Oh, <laughs> oh man, get me canceled. <laughs> <laughs> Just have my whole body as Francis. Francis and God. God, yeah, Let's yeah. not do that. Huh? <laughs> we got the uh, DUI bros. Oh my Izzy, God, I, the the poster child, values man. DUI three weeks before the Sean uh, Strickland fight. Uh, is this a downhill for Izzy? What do you guys take? What do oh, you guys so, take this? So this happened before. So he's getting charged before the fight. This was three weeks he got hit with a DUI before the Sean fight. By the way, if interesting. You guys, if you guys actually look at the alcohol content in his blood, it was like he had like a beer and a half. 
it wasn't much. Yeah. It was very, it was very like fucking little. 70 milligrams when it's supposed to be like 50 is the limit. It, it was fucking damn near next to nothing. But it's still DUI. It doesn't matter. He's New Af- Zealand. Dude, African people can out drink anybody, dude. Say I, it in Francis and got his voice. I can out drink anybody. <laughs> anybody. He's so calm. He's so positive. Yeah. I love this guy. When he speaks, the big it's so calming. It's dude. so calming. Back in the day, I used to beat everyone's ass. <laughs> I, I don't care for the Risa. <laughs> uh, so do we see Izzy? This is not a John Jones, uh, Conor McGregor situation, right? No, he had a couple of beers he drove. And by the way, it's just like, it. No, ain't, I'm not saying you can drink and drive, but a couple of beers and driving. Look, haven't we all done that before? Fellas? Nope. I, I don't drink. Well, neither I do I. So, so it's like... <laughs> Crazy. So it's crazy. But, I brought that up because I don't do that either. Hey, you guys had me, had me frozen on. on skates like Elsa, right? Now. <laughs> <laughs> but also, though, like <laughs> the shit that John Jones did is fucking so much. What you cooler. never hit a pregnant woman before? Yeah, so yeah, much I mean, cooler, dude. He John Jones hit a pregnant, pregnant lady, lady. Fled. left her, fled, left, and then came back to grab a bag of money in his trunk and then left again. <laughs> And then when That's he did fucking it, tight, dude. And when he got his DUI, he did it on the night he became a Hall of Famer. Yeah. Yeah, man. Oh, didn't he get a multiple DUI? Didn't he? Like, he did three. Do he, more, he, is he? Yeah, he, uh, he like, crashes Bentley or something. Damn. Do you guys remember that? He, like, crashed into his telephone I wish I had pole? a Bentley to crash. Yeah, dude. That's kind of nice. I do it once. John Jones is just, he's just trying to have a silly goose time. Look, what man. we're trying to say is, is he's fine. Everyone relax. Yeah, yeah, don't drink and drive, but, you know, a couple beers. Come on now. <laughs> don't look at me. <laughs> what are you, a <laughs> pussy? Talk to your audience. I don't know. <laughs> if you are if you get an accident because you're texting and driving, that's a texting problem. It's not a driving issue. You're just, you're just bad at texting. Yeah, there you go. You know what I mean? I like that. Yeah, that's you know, better. when you drink and drive, it's not a drinking problem. <laughs> yeah. It's a driving problem. It's a driving <laughs> problem. problem. Yeah, so yeah, what? Yeah. You see two lanes. Put them together. Cross your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. But texting and driving is like, that's, that's your bad, dude. That has nothing to do with... That's just you're bad at do what multitasking. What are you defending right now? I don't know where. You- <laughs> so, so you text and drive, dude? Huh? You text and drive? I'll write emails and drive. I don't text. <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck? I'll, I'll BCC somebody while I'm driving, but that's it. What's BCC? Oh, know. he's not about blind. <laughs> yeah, I just know that I click it sometimes. I just click it sometimes. I just add other people on my <laughs> recipients. You know? uh, all right, UFC 296 <laughs> fight <laughs> announcements. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, can I just mention one more thing? Oh, dude, yeah. Kamaru Usman's brother is the worst fighter on the UFC roster. Whoa! Whoa! Hot takes. What is his name? Muhammad Usman? Muhammad Usman looks like he's never fought a day in his fucking life. Have you seen that full, f- like, his footwork is absolutely... He looks like a monster, dude. <laughs> he does, <laughs> dude. <laughs> he's scary, bro. Space Jam, baby! Yo! Like, if a lizard <laughs> turned into a, a, a person, or like a, a street shark turned into a person, it'd be Muhammad Usman. Look, just be... Look. Doesn't he look like the? Doesn't he look like a scary guy? Look how gigantic Bro, he is. That looks look, like what Muggs, I say. That looks like Muggsy Bogues. What I say to yeah, 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 <laughs> Muggsy Bogues into a box. Oh my! I wouldn't say it to his face, but I say it under my breath. I'll think it in my head. Like I, watching this guy fight, right? It's like he, the biggest attribute that he has is that he's just so he's fucking big, large physical. and strong. Yeah. Other than that, striking fucking terrible. His footwork terrible. Tech, he's he's a dog a- though, bro. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he will, bro. He willed himself back into that Jake Collier fight. Jake Collier was originally a 185er. Jake, okay, hold on. Defend Jake yourself, Collier, Nick. Jake Collier was coming at Muhammad Usman, and he was beating that Jake ass. Jake Collier looks like he's nine months pregnant. <laughs> the fuck are you talking about? Oh, not- when a guy who's nine months pregnant, he can't, he can't fight. Is that what you're telling me? No, unless he's fighting John Jones in a car crash. <laughs> 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 And he <laughs> then no, yeah, bro, he looks like a monster. Bro, he looks like the purple one. He looks like the purple one. <laughs> he looks like he has the same spots. <laughs> Dude, holy you... shit! <laughs> yeah, watching him fight frustrates the fucking. He looks shit like out the orange him. guy to me. I don't think he looks like the purple. Oh, one. He looks right. like all of them together in one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh man, he's so fucking powerful. If the, he touches the, you, you're pretty much out. The point is, Muhammad Usman is scary. He's a very scary. He's scary. Guy. He's not gonna get anywhere near the top ten. That's rude. I think he gets. I hope he proves you wrong, bro. Oh, I, I hope so too. Speaking of top ten, the UFC <laughs> is going to open up their rankings to I'm top so twenty. They're doing top twenties now. Uh, okay. I don't know if that, you guys care about that. Muhammad Usman, I I'm sorry. I just got to say that because he scares me. Yeah. No, stick to your guns, man. Yeah, yeah. Pull up street work. sharks, bro. He looks like a street shark. <laughs> Dude, we just look up cartoons. We just look. <laughs> <laughs> 
think I've ever watched this show. I know what it is, but I don't... Yeah, he looks like a fucking street shark. You throw some jeans on Muhammad Usman, bro? Forget it. That uh, red one right there. <laughs> <laughs> that red one right, in the, in the, right there. You tell me that's not Muhammad Usman. Yeah, that's right Muhammad there. Usman, yeah, bro. This one's, this guy's this, a fucking monster, forget dude. Forget it. This one's Nick, the hammerhead, the eyes. He that's was, not me, bro. That's fucking... You only said that because he's black. <laughs> And that is crazy racist. Cancel <laughs> or, Gilbert. Cancel or Gilbert. accurate. Take okay. that. Yep. Cancel Gilbert right now. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm not racist. If I watched this cartoon, I'd be really upset if I watched it and the hammerhead has like an urban accent. I'd be so pissed. <laughs> I think Loki. I'm a hammerhead I shock, can, motherfucker. I think, I think they all do. I think they all do. Oh, have I think they're all kind accent. of urban. Kind oh, of I don't urban. remember. Or they're like New Yorkers or something. It's oh, they're like Brooklyn. Hey, yo, Ock. Yeah. <laughs> tom, Tom. Tom, Tom. <laughs> Uh, how do you guys feel about the Power Rangers making the Black Ranger the Black Ranger and the Yellow Ranger the Yellow? I think accurate. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, hot take, it. done. 100% accurate. What else are you going to make them? What other colors are you going to make? Yeah, the Red Ranger was a redneck. Hey, accurate. Um, what, at one point, they made the Blue Ranger Indonesian. Twice. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's right. Shout <laughs> out to <laughs> Yoshi <laughs> and Peter. He was, a, yeah. he was like an Indonesian caveman or something. That was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, that's so cool. Yoshi's a, a Power Ranger? <laughs> they, I turn on the thing. Oh, how do you use water and fire? <laughs> I'm like, they made Yoshi that handsome motherfucker a caveman? They they fucking nerfed his English so bad, dude. It was so fucking funny. <laughs> Me know how to drink water. I was like, Jesus uh, Christ. And then Peter got to be cool. Yep. Yeah. The next like, one over. Oh, my goodness. Yo, shout outs to our boys, uh, Yoshi and Peter, dude. All right, guys. UFC 296 annou- announcements. These are a pretty stacked card. Covington. Uh, Crazy card. But let's just get to what we're Woo! here for. Look at this card, man. I need to get your guys' thoughts on Tony Ferguson versus <gasps> Patty Pimblett. Did you hear about this? Did you hear about I this? I didn't hear about this. There's some really good fight matches, okay. bro. Look at, I mean, look at this. Look at Ian Gary fighting Vince <gasps> That's a good fight. Shavkat, <sighs> Stephen Thompson. Bro, I mean, this is a stacked card. We should all go to Vegas. Uh, Whoa. Thanks, Oos. Pay for it. I heard. Uh, I heard this is going to be like a very expensive. Uh, they're going to break the gate because I think um, the tickets are like thousand. Dude, bucks a Vincente piece. Like, Luque, the cheapest. And Ian Gary is going to be a banger. I heard the nosebleeds are like seven fifty. Nosebleeds? What the fuck? Absolutely. I watch that at home. You yeah, yeah, same here, yeah, bro. I love watching fights on my house. Hey, this is a fight that Tony Ferguson can win. I think okay. so too, bro. Wait, yeah, okay. I would not be surprised let's, if Tony Ferguson beats Patty. Let's yeah. let's do like somewhat uh some of the media is saying right now. A lot of the fans are upset that they're giving uh Tony to Patty, like, wow. Yeah. They're just trying to send Tony home. Of course. But a lot oh, of no, no, no. but a lot of commentators such as Michael Bisbing and others are saying, guys, this is Tony fucking Ferguson. This Even is a good matchup. His last couple fights, they weren't blowouts. No, they weren't. They were competitive. So who did Tony Ferguson fight last? Uh Michael Chandler, maybe? No, that no? Let me look. that was the second to last one. Was, right, Nate D- was it Nate? It was Nate. Was it? It was Nate. No. Oh, Bobby Green. Green. Oh, Bobby Green. Yeah, bro. NTS. See, here's the thing, right? Like, tell us what the thing is. Tony Ferguson is definitely on his way out. He's definitely there's not much oh, upside shit. to the Tony Ferguson stock. Six and zero. Oh. Let's be real. He's zero like, and six. He, but he could still be Patty. I just don't. St- it's the styles. It's the matchup. What, what do you think the logic is for the UFC? Because Patty beats Tony, great, a big name, but that's not an easy fight. You could potentially kill a star. Well, I, Patty hasn't been a star in quite a while now, right? Ever since his last little antics against Jared Gordon, like he, oh yeah, he is the only person I know that has been able to get fans to hate him in three seconds. Yeah, it happened pretty quick. Like, do you like him? What's your take on uh, Patty? I don't I know think, your opinion. Well, listen, I, you know Patty, who the boy is? Yeah, Scouser. I love the that Scouser. Scouser. I think he's a Shout great out to promoter. Liverpool. As a fighter, I don't like him at all. Like he's he's fighting a lot of people. Number one, he's actually huge for the weight class, which a lot of people are forgetting. Big boy. His biggest attribute is what that he could take a hit to the face. Like what kind of attribute is that? I, I, like that's not a good stat to have, and that stuff wanes over time. So Patty Pimblet's biggest issue is what that chin is all up in the air, and his defense is not there. His greatest attribute is his ground game. Yeah. Right? He can grab all the fuck out of somebody. But guess what? When he starts moving up to these upper levels, that's just going to get nullified real quick. Like if Bobby Green fought P- Patty, that's a tough fight. Yeah. If Benil fought Patty, tough fight. Really tough fight. Benil fucking. You, you go him. down from the top 10, top 15, there's all killers at the lightweight division. Yeah. And I feel like they all give a hard time to Patty, you know? Um,. Dude, that boy, what's his name? Luigi or whatever? Yeah. This guy. Vendrabini. He was beating the fuck out of uh, Patty. Yeah, Vendrabini was tough, too. And he went he went up in weight class to fight Patty, too. So this is Oh, he sh- did. Yeah. He did. 
So this was like his first fight at this weight class, and he was lighting Patty the fuck up, dude. Yeah. Here's the thing: I think Patty loses this next fight, which I think is unfortunate for the UFC, because like I, I don't think he's even taking his diet seriously. Well, look like, at Molly he, McCann too. Molly McCann has been on a skid like a motherfucker. Big skid. Hype train, dude, and I think he's also a hype train. I don't think he's a terrible fighter, but he's not at that level yet. He has so many holes in his game. And all these these higher level upper rank fighters are going to exploit that shit to the max, and it's just not going to happen. Like, tell me how Tony Ferguson gets it done. I think Tony Ferguson's going to KO this motherfucker, dude. Really? I think Tony Ferguson is going to KO him. I think in the last fights, his his when he when Tony has been connecting, is it has been looking fucking hard. Especially because Tony has those razor ass elbows, and the way he keeps that fucking chin up, you don't think he's gonna get knocked? Yeah, I think I think uh, Tony Ferguson can crack him and sub him. I think that if I think that's gonna be the way he beats Patty. Uh, do I think his highlights is him getting hit? Exactly. I I definitely think this is a favorable matchup for Patty. Like they're they're making this matchup so they could kind of bring that stock back up in Patty. Because if all it takes wins. is one more big win. If if Patty has an amazing performance, everybody forgets about Jared Gordon. Everybody forgets about that weird skid that he had. I guarantee um, if he beats Tony Ferguson, he gets to main card at fight night in Liverpool. Mm. Oh, yeah. Especially after the Jared Gordon fight, everyone just saw the holes mm-hmm. and everyone's stock went down on him. And then the way he reacted to it, like, oh, I fucking won that fight. Yeah, Everybody was, was like, uh, Dana! Dana! Yeah. Dana! Was like, is, is Patty a fun chill, time? Bro. Is Patty a fun time? He's a very Such fun time. Such a fun time. He's I would a love great to be time. friends with him. I would but, love for him to protect me. Um, <laughs> what? Uh, that was smooth. See how he fucking did that? Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, it's like, uh, the, the top 15 is going to be brutal for Patty. Hey. All right. I'll always watch a Patty fight, though. Oh, oh for real. 100%. You kidding me? I, yeah. You know who I, the boy is? Yep. How do you think? Okay, so I know you guys both think Ferguson, but how would Patty get this done? What has to change? The only thing he could do is choke him out. That's about it. So you're saying takedown right away? I think he decisions Tony Ferguson. <laughs> I think he decisions him, or he has to choke him out. That's the only way. If he puts him in an arm bar, Tony Ferguson is going to survive that shit. Well, yeah, Tony will. <laughs> Remember when Charles bar. had his fucking arm and he was driving his hips all the way up? Nothing. Nothing, dude. Nope. Even Charles Oliveira was like, what the fuck is this guy made out of? <laughs> yeah. And that but, guy's a psycho, too. Shout out to Jordan, though. That guy can do the split. UFC 296. What do you like? Here? Shavkat. Oh, my. Shavkat Rachmanov and Steve. This is going to. This is a striker's dream right now that. in the UFC. This is fucking amazing. I mean, Stephen Thompson, he's up there can, in age. Can, can I say hot take? I what? think that's more of a mismatch. Shavkat versus Thompson. Really? For who? Uh, for who? Yeah, for who, bro? Uh, For Stephen Thompson. Yeah. Yeah. I could see that. He but at the same time, it's like. David said his style, that style does not work well with age. Of the bouncing, of the point sparring. Tell that to Kevin Holland, bro. Come on. I uh, did, and he lost. Now he beat Kevin Holland, remember? Oh, I think you were saying Co- Kevin Holland in general. No, no, no. But, like, Steve, Steven still got it. Wonder Boy still has it. He still is a very stri- uh, slick striker who could catch Shafkat, definitely. Mm-hmm. And Shafkat, who did Shafkat just fight? Uh, Jeff. Was it Jeff Neal? It was Jeff Neal. Was it Neal? Ma- oh, yeah. Jeff. And that was, we saw some, like, we saw some damage on Shafkat. Dude, that Jeff Neal Nobody fight was, was great. And people, I, I think a lot of people were writing off Jeff Neal. They were all he's saying, still, he's oh, he's not going to beat him. He's but it, it. It he close. turned it into a scrap. Yeah. But if Shavkat leans on his wrestling and he uses better tactics to beat Steven, like if that's that's the path to beat Wonder Boy is mm-hmm. the wrestling. Or just the initiating a little bit so it open up some striking. But I don't know. Like, I feel like Shavkat is not going to go to the grappling un- unless he absolutely has to. Mm. Because Shavkat seems like a psychopath to me, and he's going to want to test his striking yeah. out. He wasn't scared of Jeff Neal, and Jeff Neal hands of steel. Dude, that mm-hmm. that boy <laughs> cracked like a motherfucker. You color commentator? Yes, right. Jeff Neal's got hands, hands of steel. steel. But <laughs> the other thing about Wonder Boy is the reason why – how old is he? He's about to be 40, yeah. and he's in the top 10 still, right? Amazing. And the reason why is because his style is so weird, and it's – I think a lot of guys aren't used to it. Or they can't really prepare it until they fight him, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. He just presents way more problems than than anyone else in the division, striking wise. And it's like you know this guy can KO you still, and he probably hits like a fucking truck, and he's hella awkward. So it's like undefeated kickboxer, <sighs> undefeated, Ooh, like two hundred fights, right? It's some ridiculous oh, fucking nuts. number. I don't know what I think. Like the recorded pro is like seventy something, but who knows how many fights he's Dude, actually had? One seventy is so stacked. It's amazing. Top 15? Uh, Jesus. The fact that Ian Gary's 11, that's 
Well, he's been pretty beating deep. some good That's guys. Pretty deep. He he deserves it, dude. Yeah, definitely. A little weird with his you know little press conference press stuff, like con- I mentioned yeah. before, but I still love him though. <laughs> I still love watching him fight. That was <laughs> our show. Uh, Nick, do you want to tell the audience something? Should they subscribe to this channel or something or what? Yeah, subscribe to the channel. You know, leave some comments for David to rebut. I want to do a quick rebuttal. We had a couple fans comment in our last podcast because you challenged them, David. So. Oh, yeah. Let's let's talk about this, you little stupid pieces of shit. <laughs> so our first comment is from Young Mastro 4153 He said, one has to take it from the champ, and Bullet didn't do that. Grasso won. She dropped Val and was ground and pounding on her final round. Damage control. Stop making it a math issue, oh. David. So... So you don't want scoring to involve math. Yeah. What are you, fucking dumb, you idiot? Yeah. Did you wake <laughs> up one day and just drink mercury, you fucking dumbass? That's dangerous. What the hell are you fucking talking about? Scoring so is math. Clearly you're not fucking Asian. Suck my fucking dick. And first of all, that whole thing, what are you talking about? This is the thing that really pissed me off about this fight. Like, towards the fifth round, right, they only talk about... <laughs> uh, uh, Please still subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs> By the way, Thanks subscribe for to this channel and comment down below. Yeah. Here's here's the annoying thing, right? They only talk about Grasso's control and takedown in that fifth round. Well, if you're going to score it a 10-8 for her and because of that factor alone, then score the other rounds for Shevchenko a 10-8 because she got way more takedowns. What about that? Mm. What about that ground control, you fucking dumb shits? So you can't only apply it to that fifth fucking round. If that's your logic, then apply it to the other rounds and give those 10-8 to Shevchenko too then. Mm. Let's talk about it, huh? Mm. Your mother never loved you and both of them are fucking cousins right <laughs> your mom and your dad are cousins and you're an inbred fuck um please subscribe and stay subscribed and we are showing episodes every friday <laughs> <laughs> and that was the rebut toe because david got that booty butt what would you say to david from this stupid podcast uh, i will say this if i respond to you in an angry way i'm not actually angry yeah. i just you know i'm keeping it spicy That's we gotta all. play it up dude play go, play baby. Up. Yeah. So, so throw some hot takes that you think David would hate in the comments below. Yeah, make fun of Nick. <laughs> <laughs> I think you would like that, actually. No, I wouldn't. I, I, don't, would actually... I don't think you would uh, you know be what? that mad about that. Listen, <laughs> if you go on your Instagram right now, I left you the nicest compliment ever on your anniversary pic. Go look. Wow. Look it up right now. Look it up. It's, it's fucking Read it on camera. the you know sweetest. I want to pull this up. So and audience it's, it's actually, I would never do this normally, but I decided that I would actually leave oh a God. very nice comment. If it's just like I know it's not a nice It's a comment. meme of a bluff. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. Dude. I know, dude. It was beautiful. How'd you get that gif on there, dude? Uh, <laughs> hey, it was a beautiful photo, and I was like, today, I'm going to be really mm, sweet. Let's find David. So you look like the valet. That's <laughs> What, can I say something though? Would I be a great valet driver? Yeah, I would yeah, be. I'd like, be. I'd be a very that's good valet the context driver. for the audience. <laughs> you yeah. look like Shang Chi in the beginning of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, <laughs> it's Simu. Shang Chi wasn't wearing Burks, my boy. Yo, honestly, that's not valet attire. I like that look, uh, Nick. I'm with you. I don't know what Davis. I didn't oh, wear that no. to my wedding, dude. Hey, I wear that on the beach. Hey, man. give me a Negroni, please. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I can drive stick, bro. Hey, Garcon. I can drive stick. Garcon, okay. give me a Negroni. Uh, make sure you give uh, Nick a follow, guys. No, don't. Let's get him to 40K. Block me, please. Um, uh, David, anything for the audience? Uh, what should uh, I do? Uh, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Share this with everybody else. We are trying to be the best, dumbest MMA yes. podcast out there. Clearly, our takes are the fucking worst, and I We're love dumb. it. It is absolutely the best. Uh, comment on everything. Remember, this is a very interactive space, so make sure that you guys are chopping it up with each other. If you want to keep it civil, keep it civil. If not, who the fuck cares, dude? Ooh, question for the audience. Give them an MMA question. Um, ooh. You know what? I'm going to leave it up to you, Nick, because you're the MMA guy. You actually have experience. What's the question? The question is... Are you lady boy? <laughs> are you lady, lady boy? boy? Lady boy. <laughs> Do you think Bryce Mitchell is going to be... The featherweight champ. We didn't even talk about Bryce Mitchell. Let's uh, should we save it next? We do it right now. We'll save it for the next one. Okay, Bryce Mitchell, be ready because we got to get into a whole flat Earth thing. Yeah, and also can't be making Danny Gate try to pray and get cut off <laughs> by, <laughs> by Michael Bisping. I can't believe we didn't talk about that. I totally forgot. We jumped. What did, oh, because we jumped in the super leg. That's why. Yeah, it's okay. Um, guys, make sure. Yeah, uh, answer that question. Will Bryce Mitchell be the next 145 a champion? Also. Uh, we will. I'll show some comments on the screen and shout you guys out. If you give us a five star review on Apple, on oh, Apple Podcasts, you. leave a comment, hit five stars, and we'll throw some of your comments on the uh, outro screen. Also, follow us on Spotify. We love you very much. I'm Gilbert. That's Nick. That's David. And peace.